Good morning. Good morning. Would you state your name, please? Jennifer Spohn. Ms. Spohn, did you formally go by the last name or by the name Jennifer Brake? I did. How did you spell that last name? B R A K E. Okay. And one second, let me get to your questions. How old are you, Ms. Spohn? I am 57. What type of work do you do? I work at a tire factory in maintenance. And where do you live, city and state? Mount Vernon, Illinois. How long have you lived there? Um, I just recently moved up there a year ago. Where did you live before that? West Frankfurt, Illinois. How long did you live in West Frankfurt? I uh, moved up there in 2014. 2014 to 2022? Okay. Were you in the Navy? Yes, I was. When were you in the Navy? Uh, from 1985 to 2002. And at any point were you stationed here in Pensacola? Yes, I was. When were you stationed in Pensacola? Um, the first time at Corey Station, I was in um, from 92 to 90. Seven. That was a way. That was the first time. Sorry. Um. How about this? The most recent time you were stationed in Pensacola. When was that? Okay, that was. Um, I got here in 1999. Okay. Now, do you know the defendant, Greg Malrick? Yes, I do. How do you know him? Um, he worked with me um, at the same base. Were you involved in a relationship with him? Yes, I was. When did that relationship begin? Uh, that began about 2002, 2001. Did you know that at the time you started a relationship with him that he was married? Um, originally, no. How long were you involved with him, or how long did you know him before you learned that he was married? Uh, not long. It was just a couple of weeks. Okay. How did you find out he was married? Um, when I met his kids, and um, they talked about it. Okay. All right, so you said you sort of started this relationship. But first of all, how did you meet him? You met him at work, but how did you really meet him? How is it that you became friendly, I guess? Um, he worked up in the curriculum office, and um, at the time that I was um, just down the hall from him. Did you see him places, or, or what, what occasions would you have to actually in interact with him? It was just at work at first. Okay, and then what? Um, at work-wise? Well, I mean, it went somewhere from there, so how, what was the next step? Um, so we were, I, I actually started talking to him um, at a command function where we started uh, drinking and we were talking and we were having a good time and um, I went back to his place with him. Okay. So, do you remember when in 2001 this relationship started? It would have been in April. End of April, beginning of May. Okay. And his wife returned from her deployment in Greece in the end of May 2001. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. During the time that you knew him, were you a babysitter for him at all? Um, I had babysat for him a couple of times. Was that before your relationship sort of took off? No, it was after. Okay. Now, did you stay at the house, spend the night at the house with the children being home? I did. Did you guys try to keep this secret? Yes. Did you think you were successful in keeping it a secret? I did. 
Um, what types of places or where did you go? After Sherry came back from Greece, where did you go to have private time with the defendant? Um, we met at a hotel a couple of times, uh, and then we would, other times we would just drive around. Did you ever have any um, sexual encounters in the minivan, the red van that was owned by the Mallard family? family? Yes. Where did you go to do that? Uh, several places. And this is still after Sherry had returned from Greece? Yes. How often do you think you saw him? Uh, quite often. I mean, you saw him at work all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about... In the evenings? Privately. How, many, how often would you see him? Often. Like once a week, several twice a week, a five week. times a week? How several many? times a week. I'm sorry. I'm several times several. a week. Okay. Was that always after work? Yes. Did the defendant ever express to you any discontent or desire to get out of his marriage? He never said anything bad about his marriage. Never said anything bad about his marriage? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did he ever tell you that he didn't want to be married anymore? Yes. Okay, well, tell us about that conversation, starting with where you were. Um, it was the times when we were in the hotel. Um, he talked about um, him not having any relations with his wife. And he brought up um, not wanting to get a divorce, and it'd be easier to kill her. Now, you said that you said times in the hotel. Did he say this or ref bring this up more than once? No, it was just the one time that I know of. Okay. You just said times, so I just wanted to clarify whether it was once or more than once. All right, so um, he said it would be easier to kill her. So anything that he said after that, did he tell you what he, how he thought he would do that? He had mentioned that he had a gun that wasn't registered to him and could not be traced back to him, but that was just the one time. Was that part of the same conversation or was that at some other time that he said that? That was at a another time. Okay. Back in the hotel when he suggested uh, rather than get, getting a divorce it would be easier to kill her, what was your reaction to that? What was your response? I thought he was joking. Why would you think he was joking? Because I didn't think he could do it. All right. Did you say that to him or express that in any way? I don't think I said anything to him about it. Okay. Do you know when this was, this conversation in the hotel? Not exactly. If since you were in the hotel, would it have had to be after Sherry returned from Greece? Yes. All right. In this murder occurred September 21st of 2001. That was a Friday. What part of the planning process, what, how much of the planning process were you involved in? Um. I was told where to be and when. Um, and I was given a reason as to why I would be coming over. All right, so you were told where to be, mm -hmm. which was where? I was told to be at the Winn-Dixie. And when were you supposed to be at Winn-Dixie? At seven o'clock. And then the why was what? What was the reason you were given? I was told that um, the reason I was supposed to be going over to his house was to return the lawnmower 
and to bring it with me. Okay. Now you actually had a lawnmower, is that right? Yes. Why did you have the lawnmower? I had borrowed his because mine was broken. So you legitimately had the lawnmower I because did. you needed it for something? All right. Um, outside of going to Win Dixie at 7 o'clock, bring in the lawnmower. Did you know anything about the plan before that? Like what was supposed to occur before Winn-Dixie? No. Did you know that when he told you to come to Winn-Dixie on that day, did you know why you would need to go to Winn-Dixie? He said that he would kill her. Do you know when he told, when did he tell you this? Prior to, exactly, I don't remember. Did you know about it, like, weeks or days days or weeks in advance, or is it something that you learned? You it know, is something that he talked about, and then um, he just said that I could do it, and but I would need you to be there to pick me up. Did you want to, well, why did you do this? Why did you participate in this? I didn't think he could do it. I wouldn't, didn't think he would do it. Um, but it's what he told me to do and that's, and I basically was doing whatever he told me to do. Did you always do what he told you to do? Pretty much. Why? That's the relationship we had. All right, so September 21st, 7 p.m., did you go to Winn-Dixie? I did. When you pulled into the Winn-Dixie, what did you see? I saw the van. I pulled up next to the van. He got out of the van and got into the car. Do you remember where the van was parked? And directly in front of Winn-Dixie, uh, midway down. Okay. He gets out of the car, and I, I interrupted you, so pick up there. Okay, so he got into the car. Um, he told me to go, and he said, don't speed, just go normal. Um, went back to 29, drove down 29 till I hit Kingsfield, and then I drove to his house. When you pulled up to the, to the van in the Winn-Dixie parking lot, did you have to wait for him to get out? No. How long do you think you sat there uh, for him to get in the car? Less than 60 seconds. I okay. mean, as soon as I pulled up, he, he came out. Did you have any conversation with him, uh, like pause, have any kind of conversation that delayed your departure from the Winn-Dixie? No. Okay. Did you have any kind of argument, anything that was loud that would draw attention to you guys sitting there in the parking lot? No. When he got in the car, what did he have with him? He had a bag. What was he wearing, if you remember? Dark clothes, I don't remember. What about his hair? He was wearing a wig. What kind of wig? Um, black, long. He got in the car with the wig? Yes. All right. Uh, and the bag. Mm -hmm. What did he do with the bag? He put it in the back seat. Okay. What did he do with the wig? Um, once we left the parking lot, he took it off. And when we were going down 29, he threw it out the window. Okay. So you're driving back to the house, not speeding. When you got to the house on Riddle Road, where did you park? Um, parked underneath the tree where the um, the darkest area was and you guys sit there for a few minutes or what um, he told me to wait a few minutes and then he got out of the car and he went to the backyard 
And after I waited a few minutes, then I got out of the car and I went up to the front door and knocked. Did he tell you to go to the front door and knock? Yes. Did he tell you specifically to use the front door? Or do you remember? He just said, just, uh, just knock on the front door. Okay. Do you know how he went back into the house? Do you know if he used the door or the window? Later I learned that it was through the window. Okay, how did you learn that? Um, over the years that we were together after that, okay. he, he brought it up. So he told you sometime later, how did he tell you he did that? Like what did he tell you happened? He, he said he was having nightmares and he, he remembered it. And he told me that he had uh, gone through the back window into his room and then when I knocked on the door, he came out of his bedroom and he came to the front door. Okay. All right, so you knock on the front door, somebody answers the door. Mm -hmm. Does he ultimately come out with you again? He does. Okay, and then what happened? When I knocked on the door, uh, the kids answered it. And when he got to the door, he had his older son, Gregory, come out to help me with the lawnmower. Um, Gregory came out to the lawnmower, pulled it out of the car, and then Greg came over and asked him to take it out to the back, to the garage. Did you move your car? Had you ha did, you ha did you have to move your car after you, after Greg had gotten out of the car? I did not have to, but um, after he got out of the car, after, yeah, and after he went into the house, um, after I waited a few minutes, I did back the car up and put it into where the light was. Okay, in the driveway, by the gate? Yes. All right. So Gregory, or the, yeah, Gregory comes, gets the lawnmower, handles the lawnmower. What happened next? Um, Greg gave me um, a bag of um, clothes, and he gave me a kiss, and he said that we wouldn't be contacting each other for a while, uh, just to wait till he, he contacted me. So he gave you a bag with clothes. Where was the other bag from that he had when he got out of the van? And the bags were from the van. Okay. Did he tell you to do anything with the bags? He said to get rid of them. He said you guys weren't going to talk, you know, for a while, and then you left the house. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Where did, you, where did you go from there? I went home. And then what happened? I waited till everybody was asleep, and I left the house around 1 o'clock in the morning. And I drove to get rid of the bags, and I had trouble finding a place. I didn't know where to take them. So um, after a while, I had driven down Quintet Road, and I drove down to where the bridge was, and I waited. And when there was no cars coming through, then I uh, pulled the stuff out of the car, and I threw it into the river. The bag that he had when he got in the car at Winn-Dixie, do you know what was in the bag? <coughs> he said it was things that um, would make it look like a robbery. What things? He said there was a CB in there, which I had pulled out and threw over. Uh, he said her rings were in there. Uh, the rest of the stuff, I don't know. Now, was there a gun in there? I'm sorry, yes, there was. <coughs> you remember the gun? I do remember the gun. How big was the gun? Um, not much bigger than my hand. What did you do with it? I also threw it over the bridge. Uh, CB radio, rings, gun, what else was in the bags if you know? Um, the clothes. Okay. What else? Um, that's all I can remember. From there, where did you go? Um, from there I drove home and I went back to bed.